euh, peut-être I wanted to take the floor at this stage um, and start with a question. Given the state of uh, current political affairs, the situation is rather challenging, especially in the Mediterranean, and I'm pointing at Israel here, and the decision um, to be made very shortly by the uh, Israeli state to go on with the annexation of the Jordan Valley in the West Bank. Uh, many members of parliament, especially in Europe, I think that there are over 1,080 of us across Europe together with the former uh, chair of a uh, speaker of the Knesset, Mr. Byrne. We have collectively signed an appeal to the European institutions and the Israeli authorities to plead for Israel to give up on its plans to annex one or two percent of the Jordan Valley and the UN has also issued a call. Uh, hence my question. Could we, probably not today, Philip, but could we at some stage schedule in the short term, schedule the meeting of the GSM group so as to discuss the position and the stance to be taken by the NPA and to try and assess the impact on peace in this region of the Middle East. If Israel were to implement its plan, also known as the Trump plan, which has been rejected by the entire international community with the exception of the US, Israel, and maybe two or three other countries, but this is of course a minority of countries. This is what I wanted to say, uh, to try and uh, uh, call for a meeting to be scheduled on this very issue, uh, because I think that it was, what is at stake is the security of the entire Mediterranean region. Sorry for the intervention, thank you. Thank you, Gilbert. Indeed, I think that this is an important issue, um, similarly to other issues that we have uh, addressed in a previous meeting, the question of uh, Libya. It's true that uh, the Mediterranean is providing us with many, many uh, crucial issues at the moment. I think that the Bureau is meeting on the 17th. The fact that the GSM is uh, meeting today or could meet in the future will have to be validated with a Bureau question. And so on the 17th, when the Bureau meets again, I will raise this question and make that proposal. Gilbert, I, I know that uh, uh, this is not an addition for today's agenda, uh, but rather a call for the scheduling of a future meeting, and I've taken good note of this. If there are no other comments, then I consider the agenda to be adopted. I suggest we now move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the uh, report on development and security challenges in the Sahel region, our colleague and friend Hamet Konkar from Turkey is the rapporteur for this uh, report. I will then uh, give him the floor. He will present the report. I think that um, he will tell us a little bit more about this report on development and security challenges in the Sahel region, which is of course of the utmost importance for all of us, including my own country, France, which is very much committed in this region. And so I am particularly interested by the presentation of this uh, re report. And so I look forward to your comments as well, dear Ahmed. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman uh, Folio. I would like to uh, present my best uh, wishes and greetings uh, from Ankara to all of my NATO PA colleagues. Uh, today, I would like to present uh, the first draft of the uh, developments uh, in the Sahel report. Uh, colleagues, as you know, uh, the Sahel region uh, is a vast, huge region and it uh, stretches from uh, Mauritania to Sudan 
and is home to roughly 150 million uh, people. Uh, as the report uh, before yourself uh, suggests, insecurity is spreading across borders with dramatic repercussions for the region's inhabitants and its neighbors. This worsening uh, security situation is further improvising a region already burdened with inequality and social and political exclusion. Uh, my report notes that armed movements linked to Al-Qaeda or Daesh are now operating throughout the central Sahel. Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso in particular have undergone repeated terrorist attacks targeting security forces, state institutions, private sector actors, aid workers and civilians. Violent extremist movements in the Sahel are, however, highly fractured, yet they are able to exploit difficult economic and social circumstances, especially in rural areas. Impoverished people have limited access to justice and enjoy little or no state protection. A deep crisis of confidence and trust has emerged, leaving many people vulnerable to a type of propaganda that both exploits and misconstrues the Islamic uh, concept of jihad. The report uh, discusses the climatic dimension of the region's uh, security and economic challenges, the lack of access to water for irrigation, poor soil, drought, as well as limited employment in rural villages undermine vital pastoral and farming economies. This has become a catalyst both for mass migration and violence, unfortunately. Migration from the Sahel countries has also become a source of grave concern in the region itself but also in North Africa and Europe, the migration routes are hazardous and those making the journey risk falling victim to many criminal groups. In Europe, there has also been a politically potent backlash against immigration from this region. It persists even as the rate of migration to Europe has slowed considerably recently. The dramatic humanitarian situation of the migrants, the lack of coordination and solidarity among European Union member states, as well as the very unbalanced sharing of the burden in terms of caring for the migrants and refugees is deeply concerning. Simply shutting down the borders with Europe or within the Sahel is not a solution. Closing borders between Sahel countries could have devastating consequences for the economic structures of the region and would undermine some of the coping strategies of already marginalized and fragile communities. The report notes that drug and arms dealers and human traffickers often follow the same routes as the violent extremist groups. There are many links between terrorists and criminal organizations. Traffickers have the resources and incentive to corrupt high-ranking officials. The widespread circulation of military arms in the Sahel has essentially militarized 
the criminal actors as well. Arms trafficking thus threatens regional security, while drug smuggling disrupts the local economies. Both are raising the level of violence, poisoning inter-community relations, and undermining respect for traditional authority and state institutions, which have weakened in recent years. Although the region is demographically very young and young people in particular lack the economic opportunities, precarious living conditions and social marginalization mean that many young unemployed men are effectively prevented from marrying and acquiring a social status in the society. This kind of marginalization has been shown to be fundamentally destabilizing for the Sahel countries. Corruption poses another very serious challenge for the region's countries. It has fueled a crisis in public trust in state institutions and raised fundamental concerns about their legitimacy. Discontent with poor governance is widespread. Militia groups linked to state actors are, in some cases, contributing to the region's violence. It shows the worrying spillover of violence in the region. The report uh, suggests that purely military responses to the growing security crisis that are not properly conducted threaten to plunge the region into, into a vicious cycle. Indeed, counterterrorism military operations can sometimes inflict heavy costs on the local populations, driving more residents into the hands of violent extremist groups. Arbitrary arrests and extrajudicial executions by members of the Sahel countries' armed forces have been documented by the human rights organizations. Subjecting members of some ethnic communities to these kind of abuses worsens the problem by widening the gap between Sahelian states and their own citizens. There are now concerns that the COVID-19 pandemic could provide another pretext for crackdowns on the civil liberties and thus provide violent extremist groups new opportunities to extend their influence. Colleagues, the widening gap between society and states incapable of offering hope for the future has opened a door for violent extremists to entrench themselves into the fabrics of the Sahelian societies. Extremist groups offer wages to vulnerable men who have no other source of income. For some fighters, joining a violent extremist group can increase their income by a factor of 20. The report suggests that, at times, the appeal of the so-called global jihad carries much less weight in terrorist recruiting than the unlawful detention of a loud one, the struggle for access to grazing areas, or the quest for recognition within a village. Violent extremist groups are sometimes perceived by local communities as offering a means to re-establish law and order. This is how desperate conditions are because these groups offer no solutions at all. The report also explores the role played by regional and international organizations, including the African Union, 
the European Union and the United Nations. France has played the leading role in building security in Mali, while United States and European allies are providing crucial support to this action. But much more efforts are needed. France's Operation Barkhans has had tactical successes, but it alone cannot bring about such a political solution to last. Its objective is to draw terrorist groups onto the military field and make them vulnerable to the local national armies. The hope is that this operation will strengthen the capacity of Sahelian states to assert full authority over their territories. But there sure is more work to be done. My report concludes that a more coherent framework for coordination among the various international actors operating in the region is needed. The international community often focuses too much on the challenge of terrorism and not enough on the sources of the terrorism. New and more innovative approaches are needed both by the international actors and the region's governments to stabilize the region and to address more enduring political, social, economic and security challenges in the region. Addressing problems like terrorism, mass migration and institutional weakness pose highly complex problems. Simple solutions will not work, nor will military initiatives alone. Furthermore, the growing criticism and hostility in the region towards the foreign military presence and its root causes require serious consideration. There is a real lack of understanding of the action and mandate of foreign forces, and this problem will have to be addressed through improved outreach and close engagement with societal actors. Ultimately, military and humanitarian responses, even when well coordinated, cannot substitute for genuinely political solutions. A new social contract is needed between the Sahel states and their people. Governments must restore their own relevance by providing basic services adapted to the diversity of this region. More political energy and resources from the international community are needed to support these ends and to foster genuine dialogue at all levels of these societies. Moreover, irregular migration, organized crime and terrorism in the Sahel drive from the strong security interdependence and weakness to generate joint responses against region-wide threats. Libya was, and to a certain extent still is, the base and route to Sahel Europe two-way movement for migrants, illicit traffickers, and also terrorist groups. The challenges faced by the Sahel states and the instability in Libya affect each other in a negative way. Restoring stability in Libya would significantly contribute to the efforts in countering terrorism, fostering economic development, and addressing irregular migration in the Sahel and South Mediterranean region. Therefore, in Libya, an inclusive intra-Libyan political and reconciliation process should be facilitated based on the Libyan political agreement of 2015 and its institutions. And with the UN Security Council Resolution 2259 and other relevant UN Security Council resolutions. 
I would like to uh, extend my report in the future with the contributions of my colleagues uh, from our NATO member countries, also from the colleagues from the Mediterranean and Spatial Group, in order to uh, reflect uh, also the current developments uh, in the area, in the Sahel region, connected with the developments with Libya, as uh, also suggested by President Attila, Mr. Hazi. So I would like to also, uh, at this point, thank uh, Chairman Folio and uh, our Secretariat, uh, Paul Cook and Anne Lohr, uh, for their uh, contributions uh, in preparation of this report. And I will be happy to receive uh, comments uh, and recommendations uh, from my colleagues. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Thank you, uh, Mr. Rapporteur. Um, I would like, uh, dear Ahmed, to uh, thank you for uh, the quality of this uh, presentation. So I saw that there was um, uh, many people who would like uh, to speak. So uh, the first one is our colleague, Mamoussos Voludakis from Greece. Monsieur Voludakis, on va vous mettre, uh, on va vous donner la parole. Mr. Voludakis, you will, be, you will be given the floor in a second. Alors, et, visiblement, il y a. Il semblerait que nous ayons un problème avec Monsieur Voloudakis. So apparently there's a problem with um, Mr. Voloudakis' system. So we'll try again. I... So we'll go in the order that uh, appears on the screen. So Deki Loan now, if you can... Um, Give him the floor. Madame Loon will give you the floor. Peut-être en, en, en attente. Maybe while we wait. Uh... Perfect. So I hope you hear me as well. Oui, on vous entend. Oui, yes. oui. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so thank you very much for, for the uh, interesting report. And uh, thank you for um, uh, drawing the attention clearly to the vicious circle in the region between economic weaknesses and the security and political stability. And, and in this uh, lens, I would like to draw the attention to the fact that even if the engine of asylum migrations is the Europe European labor market revolution and the engine of drug trafficking is European demand. And even if neither immigrants or drugs necessarily originate from Sahel region, there have still been constructed huge infrastructures structures to support this business. And we are threatened to create even bigger infrastructure if uh, international cooperation does not proceed with having carefully and certainly the security questions in mind. So I think we could um, also um, uh, suggest that it is vitally important not to incentivize the south-north connections, but the east-west connections in roads, telecommunications, etc., so that development of Sahel can and must take place firstly in facilitating cooperation inside the region. Which brings us to the fact that it, it, for, for this, it needs also to liberate the region from um, 
any currency that is not valued accordingly to the internal market situation. And this lends the process that is going on last uh, uh, weeks now from going to CFA to ECHO is a sort of um, missed opportunity. So until the Sahel countries need to use tragically overvalued currency, their people have no other choice but to turn into criminal trafficking, putting in danger both themselves and us as well. So what would you think, maybe we, you could add some paragraphs on, or on some thoughts also on the monetary policies on the region, as this is a vital tool to escape this econ economic weakness and to, to give the Sahel their own development. So as you, you said in the end of your report, that Africa could really belong to Africans. Thank you. Voilà. Monsieur Folio, nous avons euh, trois autres euh, demandes de les, prise les, de parole. Les, les... Monsieur Folio, nous avons trois autres requests pour le floor. Sonia Krimi a requesté le floor. Monsieur Krimi, nous allons maintenant vous donner le floor. Hello. Good afternoon and greetings from Paris, from the French uh, Parliament. I'm very pleased to see all of you and greet you from my very small office. Firstly, I would like to thank our rapporteur for the high quality of this report. Thank you very much, Mr. Chankar. Uh, it's a very comprehensive report which takes into account all the essential aspects of the crisis in the Sahel. Firstly, there's the fact that there's this very complex tie between development and security. Mr. Rapporteur, you explained that all very well. The issues of development, the economic uh, indicators, and the ties between uh, go democratic governance and uh, uh, poverty and lack of um, economic perspectives. Um, uh, and a number of other issues. Um, so you've drawn a first assessment of that situation, which is very interesting and also very pleasant to lead. So to read. So uh, thank you for that. Bravo. The risk here really is with regards to nations that don't have adequate control over their territory and their borders. And I'll say a few more words about that a little later. You said a lot about uh, safe havens that exist for criminal groups and the transit areas for uh, criminal groups and their, their rear bases for terrorist groups as well, which allow the terrorist groups to, to flourish and to develop at a large scale. You really um, brought those two points to, to the fore in a detailed way, so thank you very much for that uh, high quality assessment of those issues. I have a number of comments some things that I'd like to, to raise with you here. And if you'd like, um, Mr. Rapporteur, we, I can submit these remarks in writing if you wish, and we can have uh, an exchange in, in writing uh, before the approval of the final version of your report. And we can see together whether this will happen through an amendment or through any changes that you mish, may wish to make in the text now, but I'll, I'll explain them briefly here. Firstly, um, Europe and its member states. You depict Europe as being primarily motivated by the fears of massive migration and the and the fact that uh, development aid w would shift to uh, border control measures. We in France are of the view that if nations are incapable of meeting their basic state responsibilities, then it is then our borders that are affected by that. And that is why France, as you very well know, is present in the Sahel, but it is present at the request of the heads of state uh, of the countries in the region. 
it's not just France, as, as by the way, there, there are also European, other European states that are uh, involved as well in order to help stabilize uh, West Africa, in order to stabilize this region and for our collective security. And the summit in Nouakchott explains that very clearly. So the, the underlying reasons behind what Europe is doing, it's not just to prevent massive waves of migration, it's also uh, following a legitimate request for assistance in terms of security from countries in the region. And then a second comment, if I may, dear colleague, is uh, the, the issue where either the international community allows things to fall into chaos or they um, intervene and therefore um, get involved in the hostilities. Of course, you know better than I what happened in Iraq uh, with the U.S. involvement there. Uh, obviously, this is a completely different situation. But when there are these types of interventions, often local population can turn against nations that um, are engaged in those interventions. And that, in fact, can be seen in all sorts of criticism which is made against the French government, both in the past and currently. Uh, for example, the 60th anniversary of the independence of the Sahel countries uh, which was marked at uh, uh, the, the event in Pau in France, um, shows uh, that um, France uh, maintains its commitment in the, in the region. And in fact, our colleague Christian Combron is uh, the chair of the uh, Defense and Foreign Affairs uh, Committee in our, in our Senate, so he's also involved in that kind of issue. So this is a, it's a bit of a paradox, and it appears in paragraph 42 of your report um, Mr. Rapporteur, but we don't really see that as a paradox. So if you could perhaps explain a little bit better that issue. So the coordination between paragraphs 35 and 42 of your report. I can also send you a fourth and fifth remark, but I'll probably do that in writing. Otherwise, that this will take a little bit too long. We can, we can have a, a direct exchange later. Uh, and that concerns the goals of Operation Barkhan. So this is for uh, paragraphs 41, 42, and 61. And before concluding, I would just like to recall that uh, France is paying the heaviest possible price in terms of loss of human lives to try to protect security uh, in the Sahel. We had 10 soldiers who died uh, in uh, Operation Serval, and 35 soldiers have, uh, French soldiers have died since the beginning of Operation Barkhane including the son of our colleague, uh, colleague Jean-Marie Bocquel, who you know. He's a, a senator, a French senator. So his son died in the conflict. Uh, but France remains, um, um, continues its support for our African partners, who they also are paying a very heavy price uh, in this struggle. So I would like to pay my, pay my respects and pay tributes to all the soldiers who've died in this conflict, French soldiers and African soldiers and everyone everywhere is fighting for, for peace and for, for freedom. In Mali, Burkina Faso, and, uh, and Niger, there are local populations that are suffering from violent terrorist attacks, and more and more of them are uh, falling victim to these attacks. In paragraph 64, you mentioned this, and you said that at best we can hope that uh, Barkhan will help uh, Sahel uh, countries have better effective control in terms of security over their territory. So the idea is that the G5 countries will be able to carry their share of the burden in terms of protecting their populations and uh, ensure state presence on the, um, on, on the territory. But we shouldn't expect Operation Balkan to do things that it can't do because uh, uh, Operation Barkhane is about fighting against terrorism. Turkey itself is also uh, very strong in the fight against terrorism. And as you very well know, you can't just simply uh, stamp out terrorism. That's, uh, this phenomenon has deep underlying roots. And so you can't expect uh, Operation Barkhane to uh, uh, eliminate the underlying cause of terrorism. That, that's simply not realistic. Similarly, Operation Serval uh, couldn't itself, by itself, uh, uh, stabilize uh, Mali, as you uh, mentioned in paragraphs 41 and 62. But uh, if I may, Rapporteur, I will also submit these comments in writing. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. 
Thank you very much, Sonia. You and Ahmed both have uh, your backlit. There's light coming from behind you, uh, so you're you're both in similar lighting. And I think there's a there were other requests for the floor. Yes, Chairman. Three other colleagues have requested the floor. I don't know if you want to listen to all the questions at once or one by one. No, we'll take all the questions together. Unless I'm mistaken, Mr. Chakirozel from Turkey, Mr. Voludakis from Greece, and Mr. Fomantini from Italy. Well, yes, let's give them each the floor, one after the other. Mr. Chakirozel from Turkey, please. Yes, please go ahead. So, uh, again, after a long time, I, I firstly I wish health to all of us in our countries. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, my, my dear colleague uh, Berat for this comprehensive uh, report, indeed a very, a very timely report. I would like to uh, mention a couple of issues uh, uh, to, 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 to contribute to his report. Uh, as you know, as a target and transit country for, for migrants, uh, our country, Turkey, uh, 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 firmly believes in combating um, uh, that issue with addressing the root causes of illegal, uh, 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 illegal migration. So, um, so the security of this, this Sahel region is a source of concern not only for that region, but also for the whole continent and beyond, uh, to, for all of our countries. Um, definitely to combat all forms of this terrorism, we need to adopt a comprehensive approach, uh, which requires an effective and active uh, uh, cooperation and, and, and participation of all states, as well as uh, regional and international organizations, where we, we, we talked a lot about uh, uh, terrorism and the cause of terrorism, but I would like to emphasize another challenge in, in, this, in this continent, Africa, which has direct, direct impact on security issues due to insufficient food supply, lack of uh, water sources, terrorism and conflicts. Africa has been witnessing an unprecedented level of human mobility, as also mentioned in the, in the, in the report. So, uh, I mean, we really need to focus on the, on the root causes. And I also find it very uh, very important and very uh, um, uh, 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 efficient and effective the the uh, the the uh, the, um, um, the messages uh, especially uh, regarding that uh, the, the relation of the Sahel region and its influence to to international uh, crises like uh, especially in, in, in Libya and I, I totally agree with uh, with Perat about his his conclusions conclusions uh, regarding the uh, crisis uh, in 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 uh, in Libya uh, and uh, and indeed uh, indeed uh, the the Berlin summit and UN Security Council uh, uh, resolutions should be should be followed uh, should be adopted. Uh, I mean, the, the, in, in Libya, we should uh, uh, indeed finding a solution to Libyan crisis can also have an impact to Sahel region and also uh, uh, the um, uh, touching the issues uh, in Sahel region would also definitely have a di direct uh, uh, impact on the crisis in 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 in, in Libya. So. Uh, indeed, uh, we have to uh, focus on the on the root causes, uh, and uh, this, the, the issues of Sahel region, uh, be it terrorism, be it other issues, human mobility, etc., indeed have a have a great impact on our uh, on our crucial issues of especially the migration. So I congratulate Berat for this report, and 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 as I said, uh, we should we should definitely uh, focus on. On root causes of of uh, of the migration, which is uh, which which Sahel region is one of those root causes. Thank you very much indeed.
Monsieur le Président, la prochaine demande de prise de parole. Mr. Voludakis, from Greece, has requested the floor. I give the floor to our colleague, Mr. Voludakis, from Greece. Il semblerait que nous ayons un, un problème technique. We seem to have a technical issue with this uh, connection. In that case, we give the floor to our Italian colleague, Paolo Formantini. Could I ask you to be concise in your statements because I'm afraid that we may be running behind schedule and it will be difficult for us to catch up afterwards. I read your draft report on the Sahel region very carefully. Um, you spoke about uh, the huge challenges coming from that area for the Alliance. Now, being Italian, I am well aware of the dramatic situation there. France is uh, intensely involved. Uh, we've discussed this at the Parliamentary Assembly. and. Uh, in addition, Italy will be more and more involved. And the goal, of course, is to uh, tackle uh, the threats coming from the region, even terrorist threats uh, and the um, trafficking uh, of migrants uh, carried out by jihadi organizations. So uh, Italy will be there. All the Italian parties are fully aware of the huge problem in the entire area, in the broader Mediterranean, for the southern flank of the alliance and for the stability of all of our countries. In any case, in the uh, draft report, uh, I simply cannot see how you can write, and our delegation will submit some written remarks on this, how you can possibly say that we need to draw up a new social pact for the governments in that area. Now, I wouldn't want us to be thinking that we can impose a, a democracy with force on those governments. Thank you. Monsieur le Président, la prochaine demande de parole. Chairman, Mr. Perestrello from Portugal is the next speaker who has requested the floor. Our colleague from Portugal, Mr. Perestrello, has the floor. I would like to congratulate uh, the rapporteur, Hamet, for the excellency of his uh, report and also for the excellency of the presentation of the report that is so much important as the report itself. And for the underlying, for, for, the, for, for his underlining of the roots of the problem in the Sahel. And for a certain inefficiency, inefficient way how we are fighting this problem. And I uh, dare to suggest a small uh, mention in the report to the spreading of religious, uh, religious te terrorism, of religious terrorism to uh, the south of the African uh, continent. We are now fighting uh, increasing incidents of religious terrorism in the north of Mozambique. And I believe that we, as a, uh, 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 an organization that is concerned uh, with uh, terrorism, already have shown that, uh, that, that we need to, to persecute this kind of terrorism wherever it is. And we probably, in a short period of time, will be facing the need of going further in helping African countries to fight this kind of terrorism. So I will dare to suggest a small mention to the increasing uh, episodes of terrorism in the north of Mozambique uh, as an alert to a near future. Thank you very much.
Merci, chers collègues. Donc là, je laisse, je donne la parole à notre. Thank you, esteemed colleagues. I'm going to give the floor to our Greek colleague, Manusos Voludakis. Chair, I think we have a technical problem with Mr. Voludakis. We're going to try again. I was told that there was a technical issue. It seems that we're unable to have Mr. Volodakis online. I'm sorry to interrupt. We have one last request for the floor from Mr. Zgayer from Tunisia. Oh, sorry. I didn't see it. Mr. Zgayer, you have the floor. pleasure for us uh, from the Tunisian Parliament to be part uh, of this. And thank you for the uh, for this report. Um, the most important point that I want to mention is um, to emphasize uh, the question of the roots of uh, uh, illegal immigration. Because for us uh, in Tunisia and generally for the uh, North African uh, countries, it is uh, impacting uh, our economy in, uh, in a very clear way. Uh, we're not uh, living in uh, normal times. We're living in a crisis. And uh, we're seeing clear coordination between these different groups of uh, criminal organizations that they work on, uh, on, on these routes. Uh, we see this in, uh, in, uh, in our neighborhood the poor regions of our country. We see this uh, with, uh, with some of uh, African citizens that they come uh, to our country and they, they are um, uh, 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 using this person in, in a criminal way um, to, uh, to force somehow our security borders and and, and this is really affecting our security as, uh, as a country on the North African, uh, uh, on, on the north, uh, on the south side of the Mediterranean area. So I would like to thank you for um, this important component of your report, and I'd like to, 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 uh, to give more consideration on this in, in terms of uh, um, uh, this criminal organization that uh, they, they work on these uh, routes. Uh, they are not just a criminal organization uh, that they work on illegal immigration, but they, it is a human trafficking, and uh, we're improving our laws in Tunisia, and I think it should be the same for other uh, countries in North Africa. Uh, to be clearly, this is a human trafficking. It's not only uh, something uh, uh, connected to, uh, to, uh, to moving from a country to another. Uh, and the other issue is, is the impact of this uh, illegal uh, criminal organization on our economy. And then our country is not that big, it's a small country, we're living in a crisis, and uh, the presence of a big number uh, of these uh, people are, are really impacting uh, our economy. Um, in many times we saw that this criminal organization, human trafficking organization, they actually they worked on having social um, demonstrations in the poor areas of our country. Uh, so our security to lose control on these poor areas and to emphasize and to push these uh, poor guys, young people that they didn't find uh, an economic solution for their life actually to, uh, to threaten uh, the security and, and to, to move in mass to the uh, to Italy or to other North uh, countries. So I believe um, uh, emphasizing also the economic impact of, uh, of this illegal immigration is really important. And thank you again for the invitation. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to participate with you. Monsieur le Président, nous pensons avoir résolu le problème.
chair i think we've solved the technical issue so i think if you agree we can give the floor to manusos Voludakis. we are going to try again to give the floor to our greek colleague can you hear us manusos can you hear us Thank you and apologies for the um, for the technical issues. Um, I would like to thank Mr. Uh, our colleague uh, Mr. Ahmed Berat for a really very informative uh, report that was um, uh, uh, really um, full in coverage. And I would, uh, in particular, wish to. Uh, uh, complement the, the, the idea to uh, the, the fact that uh, the report uh, states that we should not only uh, uh, focus on the um, uh, issues related to migration and security but also to the roots of the problem. Nevertheless, you, you, we all understand that um, the uh, issues related to security and migration can be uh, of um, greater urgency, even though uh, they are not the, the roots of the problem, or even though in addressing them we would not address the roots of the problem, nevertheless addressing them can be an urgent uh, issue occasionally, so we should uh, take this into account. Now, there is one remark I should make, and I think it should be added in the report. Uh, you rightly mention and describe <coughs> the uh, presence and actions of uh, certain uh, fundamentalist, uh, Islamic fundamentalist groups, uh, among which the Islamic State of uh, Greater Sahara uh, and other similar groups, which pose, of course, a threat to the region, uh, but also to the, uh, to the region to the north, because it's, it's actually a global threat. Now, we have seen in Libya, uh, an influx of fighters from Syria uh, coming directly from the former original Islamic State in Syria and, uh, and Iraq. Uh, according to the uh, London-based Sir Syrian Observatory of Human Rights, uh, there are now some 10,000 fighters, uh, Syrian jihadi fighters in Libya, uh, which have been uh, transferred there by Turkey. Now, I know this is a very sensitive issue. Uh, nevertheless, I'd like to ask you, what, is the, what are the risks that are uh, presented by the fact that we have um, a, a, jihadist, a series of jihadist groups operating in the Sahel region, which are now in, in contact, in very uh, 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 close geographical proximity with uh, fighters coming from the original Islamic State uh, in the Middle East. This is an issue that should be mentioned and, of course, somehow addressed. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues. Merci. Je pense qu'il n'y a plus de demandes de parole. I think. Yeah. There are no more uh, floor requests. Uh, Chair, there is one last request from Gutierrez. Fernando, you have the floor. And then we are going to close the floor request because we are running out of time. Unless Paul wants to take the floor. No. We are then going to give the floor to Mr. Guterres from Spain. Chair, I think we having a technical issue with Guterres. What I suggest? Ahmed, you can try and answer the questions, maybe not in to detail the fashion because I think we'll run out of time. You can give uh, global answers 
there'll be um, com written comments and and changes. Then the reporter is waiting for the comments in writing so as to be able to assess the comments and then we will discuss this during a face-to-face -face meeting so as to write the final version of the meeting. Ahmed, you have the floor. Je vous entends pas, cher Ahmed. Ahmed, I can't hear you. Hello. Uh, I would like to be uh, brief uh, in uh, my comments and uh, hopefully uh, I can address uh, all the issues raised by my colleagues. Uh, so the first of all, uh, our the colleague uh, uh, Mrs. Loon uh, mentioned uh, the economic aspects, the monetary policy and the monetary issues uh, in the Sahel countries. Uh, I think that it was a, a fair assessment and uh, uh, we can uh, include uh, some uh, part uh, relating to the uh, monetary and financial issues uh, and how they are affecting the situation uh, in the uh, Sahel country. So I take that suggestion uh, as a, a positive uh, contribution to the report. Uh, when we uh, come to our uh, French colleague, uh, Mrs. Karimi's uh, suggestions, uh, especially regarding the France's uh, position and contribution uh, to the operations in the Sahel, and especially in Mali, uh, we try to uh, use uh, the resources mainly from the uh, French Senate and the French uh, sources. Uh, however, if she wants to provide some more details and uh, other contributions, uh, if uh, Sonia can uh, share uh, them with us uh, in a written form, uh, we will try to uh, incorporate uh, the relevant parts uh, uh, in that sense. And uh, as uh, I am looking to my notes, uh, she has also given some details about uh, the G5 and uh, her French involvement uh, with the G5 issues. Uh, we appreciate that uh, France is basically uh, contributing in that sense to the G5 operations as well. Uh, and uh, it's important uh, for us to uh, support this kind of initiatives, uh, as in the case of G5. Uh, our colleague uh, Chakurazer uh, focused on the uh, root causes of uh, the illegal migration, which is a very important issue for uh, all of our countries. Uh, we put an emphasis on that in the report, and she, he also mentioned the stability, uh, the crucial uh, situation uh, as far as the stability in Libya affecting all the region. Uh, I think it's, it's something that we need to put more focus on uh, when we develop the report further. Uh, we will try to uh, give some more focus uh, on that issue. Uh, Mr. Uh, Formantini uh, has uh, mentioned uh, that uh, the social pact, the social contract needed. Uh, here in the report, uh, we basically said that uh, we do not want to impose a new social pact uh, from outside uh, uh, to the region. But uh, we are just stating that uh, relations uh, between the populations and the governments are uh, not good. And uh, there is a trust crisis uh, there. So the report uh, states this, uh, make this apparent. And uh, the report says there is a need to renew the social pact and restore the confidence uh, in the government. So what we can do as our individual countries, we can support this kind of processes 
but uh, of course this is an internal uh, decision they have to make. Uh, our role will be to support them, not impose something uh, from outside. Uh, I want to be clear on that. Also, uh, I would like to thank uh, our colleague from Tunisia for his uh, perspectives and uh, for his uh, contribution uh, to the report. Uh, we think that uh, uh, the uh, illegal uh, migration or the, the human trafficking, these issues are uh, quite critical uh, issues which is affecting uh, countries like Tunisia. And uh, I think that we need to work together uh, to understand uh, the root causes and uh, find some uh, uh, new policies maybe to help uh, contain this problem. Uh, we know that uh, there are some spillovers uh, from violent extremist fighters from Syria. Uh, uh, to, this is a response to my colleague from Greece. Uh, his uh, mention of the uh, extremist fighters, you know, uh, fighting in different uh, places, also in Libya. Uh, but uh, I would like to uh, clarify that uh, basically a legitimate opposition which is on the, on the table uh, with the Assad regime. So uh, we need to uh, uh, separate the violent uh, extremists or uh, the way that he calls the jihadists. Uh, Turkey uh, has not been uh, doing any kind of business with this kind of uh, uh, mentalities because uh, as Turkey we have been the target of the most uh, terrorist uh, attacks and uh, uh, abuses from this type of extremist organizations and Turkey is quite uh, sensitive and careful uh, in uh, fighting against these extremist uh, uh, organizations. Uh, I don't know if I am uh, missing anything, but as I said, uh, uh, I will be uh, happy to receive the, the written uh, contributions uh, to the report, and uh, we will try to incorporate uh, the relevant parts so that uh, the report uh, becomes a, a better uh, report uh, that represents the full picture. So thank you very much. Uh, for to every uh, for their contributions. Merci, Monsieur le rapporteur. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, thank you, reporter. It it seems that we've solved the technical problems, the connection problems with Gutierrez. I'm going to give him the floor. Mr. Gutierrez, can you hear me? Je crois. Ah, très bien. Vous avez la parole. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. President, and thank you much for the, the, the draft of the, of the report, and, and many thanks to give me the opportunity to go back to my previous question. I will make it very quick, a very quick one, because we are already a bit late. Um, it was concerning the support of the European Union to the projects uh, led by European Union. It, it has been mentioned in the report, it's included in the report, the EU-led projects that has been supported by the European Union countries. I think I've heard during the initial presentation that the drafter made, and Mr. Berat, which I thank you very much for the comprehensive report, which is 
quite comprehensive for all the matters that happen in the in the region concerning all the areas of concern. But I understood that you, you mentioned in your initial presentation uh, something related to a lack of solidarity coming from the European Union countries concerning the, the, the borders closing to the migration. I think we have a real problem and we are trying to to handle this problem, to manage this problem, um, making those EU-led projects, because we understand that no one leaves their own countries if there is no need to, to leave the country. If they leave their country, it's because either they are pushed by the traffic human, uh, the human traffickers or because they don't have the possibility to sustain themselves in their own countries. And we are trying from, from Spain, and I, I think that from most of the European Union countries, to promote this type of project, but not to just send the, the funding or the financial uh, support, but to conduct the projects on the terrain. And to do that, it's, there is a requirement to grant the, the security, the safety, and also the, the presence of those uh, actors in, in the region. And I think that is the support that we could provide to the European Union countries to be able to conduct those projects by themselves, uh, keeping presence in the, in the region and conducting those, those projects. Because I think this is uh, the main tool we have to, to fight uh, against the unvolunteer uh, migration because many regions, not only because there are a lack of uh, uh, financial possibilities, but also because of those uh, human traffickers acting in the in the area. Uh, many thanks and congratulations for the for the report, and we'll make our, our best to to send you our comments uh, in time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, and uh, I uh, took note of your comments, and I really appreciate uh, your contribution uh, to my report. Thank you very much. Merci. Thank you, thank you very much, all for your comments and uh, remarks. Thank you to our rapporteur for taking good note of all of these uh, comments and of course uh, we will be discussing all of this in one of our upcoming meetings to discuss the report further and adopt it. Now on the agenda is the next item, i.e. Uh, the uh, draft uh, report um, on uh, the COVID-19 pandemic in the MENA region. This is my honor to present this report to you today. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, the stability of uh, the MENA region, Middle East, Northern Africa, be it uh, and the economic stability as well as the uh, security stability is absolutely crucial to the global global equilibrium and affects directly all countries of the alliance. This is why the GSM has decided to focus on this issue in this report and it is my honor to present this report as the uh, chair of the GSM today. COVID-19 appeared for the very first time in the MENA region in January 2020 in the United Arab Emirates. Since then, the number of reported cases in the region has considerably, considerably increased. As the report states, the side effects of the pandemic have had and will continue to have a very significant impact on the region with, with um, a halt in the production processes, uh, trade volumes decreasing, a collapse in the prices of energy and a strong impact on the industries of travel and tourism. With the exception of Iran and Egypt, which are currently experiencing the peak of the pandemic and I would like to send warm greetings to our Egyptian delegates present here today. So with the exception of Iran and Egypt, the direct health impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the populations of the MENA region has been lower than expected. Compared with France and several allied countries such as Italy, the US or Spain and I would like of course to express my solidarity to the uh, 
aforementioned countries, the MENA region has been relatively spared by the pandemic. This could be explained by the fact that the average age of the population is lower, and this could uh, in turn explain why mortality rates are relatively low in these regions. But the measures taken by states shouldn't be overlooked uh, and are underestimated. Very rapidly, these countries have taken uh, very serious, strict, and effective measures so as to protect their, their populations. The health disaster that uh, many feared uh, very fortunately didn't materialize. But this positive outcome should not mask the extent of uh, the challenges linked to the pandemic and these challenges will no doubt hit this region and are already affecting the region. The COVID-19 has not said its last word and we must remain very watchful. We need to prepare to face a large-scale crisis. Many health systems in the region are dysfunctional and access to adequate and quality health care remains impossible for a large part of the populations. Those shortfalls are compounded by a fall in imports and shortages in medical equipment, which are due to global uh, trade disruptions. In Yemen, Libya, Syria, or the Gaza Strip, health systems have been completely devastated by years of war. In Iran, sanctions have already uh, significantly weakened the health system. In the Gulf countries, health services are also under tremendous, pen, pen, uh, un, amen, tremendous pressure sorry, due to the pandemic. Those uh, uh, tremendous challenges must be addressed. Our priority should be to protect vulnerable communities. COVID-19 presents indeed a particular health risk for refugees, women and children. In countries played by war and in uh, refugee camps in the region, COVID-19 is a crisis within the crisis. Several millions of people eke out a living in uh, overpopulated areas and unsafe areas. When you share one well for several t tens of thousands of people, it is particularly difficult, of course, to enforce uh, social distance distancing. For a vast majority of people, Going out is a matter of uh, surviving, and uh, this, including when this means uh, facing a risk of being contaminated or contaminating. Without a job, these people cannot eat uh, the next day. Lockdown and social distancing measures are therefore um, very difficult to enforce. A food crisis would primarily affect women and children who are particularly vulnerable. Beyond the devastating effects of COVID-19 on health, it also causes considerable economic turbulences, turbulence with a drop in domestic and external uh, demand, a reduction in the trade, disruption of production, a collapse in foreign direct investments, and uh, um, other factor uh, affecting the tourism industry. Fiscal revenues in many countries uh, rely on oil and tourism, uh, which bring significant uh, revenues that are no longer available. The agreement made by exporting oil exporting countries in April uh, to reduce the global output unfortunately came too late and did not prevent a spectacular drop in oil barrel prices. This uh, drop is directly linked, linked to a drop in uh, global consumption levels and a price war between Saudi Arabia and Russia and it will take months to redress the situation. A situation that uh, also impacted uh, the gas market and other um, oil products. In this context, it is therefore difficult to imagine implementing social reforms and as well as economic and financial reforms that are, however, absolutely indispensable in the region, in, in Algeria, Kuwait, and, Arabi, and Saudi Arabia. The ambitions for reform, unfortunately, have already been downgraded, and um, uh, this is compounding, compounded by the already current economic crisis. The situation, the economic situation, uh, is compounded by the level of poverty, as I said, and induced 
has induced social unrest. Social unrest, which was already present in a number of countries before the start of the pandemic. The pandemic, as well as uh, lockdown measures, have temporarily reduced the noise level. But these protests and movements should not remain frozen for very long, and they will probably start again fueled by economic crisis and deteriorating life conditions. This instability and frustrations could also benefit terrorist movements in the region. I would like to underscore another uh, effect of the pandemic. I'd like to say that it has highlighted several weaknesses in the MENA region. COVID-19 has exposed tremendous inequalities and rivalries. We must be very watchful. Um, especially when it comes to gaps within regions, uh, gaps and disparities or differences between communities and populations within states. And uh, the uh, economic and health crisis will only compound the situation. We must be very watchful uh, when it comes to these rivalries between regions uh, with uh, uh, lasting geopolitical consequences. Fortunately, uh, in the wake of the pandemic, new initiatives for cooperation and dialogue have uh, been launched. Uh, for example, between Hamas, the Palestinian Authority, and Israel. Uh, unfortunately, this hasn't stopped Israel from reiterating its intention to annex uh, settlements in the, the West Bank by, by the end of the summer, and uh, hence the comment made by Mr. Roger earlier on. The international community must be mobilized. Fiscal constraints must, must not translate into a, a, a drop in ODA. The MENA region would, be, would feel the dramatic and lasting inf impact of such a drop. If there was a lack of coordinated response, this could facilitate the uh, emergence of new uh, hotspots of tensions within the region and even lead to the implosion of the region. Priority must be given to displaced people and refugees as well as women and children. We must uh, address uh, the basic humanitarian uh, needs. It is essential to recall that pushed by the energy of uh, despair, people do not see any other solution than trying to uh, flee the situation. Of course, we must be uh, ready to face the, the consequences. Our countries must work very closely with the governments within the region. We must make sure that the necessary resources uh, for um, official development aids are part and parcel of the recovery plans implemented by each allied countries. Besides, COVID-19 has also highlighted uh, the uh, uh, the inextricable tensions and regional conflicts. The international community must be mobilized to uh, foster cooperation and open new diplomatic channels. I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Um, thank you for listening to my presentation. Um, my presentation might have been a bit lengthy, and I would like to ask uh, those of you who would like to take the floor to please do so. For now, I don't really see anyone on my request list, but I'm sure there will be more volunteers. We have uh, about 20 minutes ahead of us for a Q&A session. As I said about the uh, previous report, this current report will be discussed in detail during our next session. I will, of course, circulate um, through Paul. And I'd like to thank him very much for his valuable support in the drafting of this report. I will, as I said, ask all of you and all of the delegations to circulate comments in writing to Paul. We do have uh, one question from our Secretary General, Roxandra Popa, and I would also like to remind participants of the procedure to follow. If you would like to ask for the floor, you need to press on the request to speak button on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, Secretary General, dear Roxandra, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you. Chair, since there were no other questions, I uh, would like to take the floor to 
applaud your excellent report, which uh, I've uh, read with a keen eye. I would like to ask for your opinion on the fact that uh, NATO has provided assistance to several partners during the COVID, COVID crisis, but I feel, and of course I speak under the authority of our colleagues from NATO, I don't think that there's been any assistance provided to the uh, MENA region. However, I do feel that any opportunity for NATO to support these countries in this region and also to try and maybe convey a more positive image of NATO would be a great opportunity for NATO. This will be a chance to uh, highlight a positive contribution to the region in the face of the uh, pandemic. And so this is the question I would like to ask you. In case of a second wave, do you think that uh, NATO should consider providing more visible aid to countries in the region which would then uh, bolster their relationship and their partnership with the region? Thank you very much. This is an excellent idea. And as we say, a friend in need is a friend indeed. And of course, uh, this would be an excellent opportunity and this would be a, a useful investment for the region. But I would, al I would also like to reiterate one point, and I've said this before, I'll say it again. In a multilateral framework, all efforts displayed by countries when it comes to uh, official development aid uh, to refugees, notably, this should be bolstered. Uh, I haven't said this before, but this is something that is explained in the report. This is a region that for the last decade through the Arab Spring with movements that have uh, significantly destabilized the region with uh, some states experiencing a civil war situation uh, or a failed state situation, and I have in mind, of course, Libya. Well, in the face of this situation, clearly it is difficult to manage this health crisis. Even more so knowing that there is very likelihood of a second wave in the northern hemisphere with uh, some uh, negative signals in other countries and so this will of course mean a very challenging situation uh, for uh, some of us, some of our allies and as, as we've explained African countries are n not spared from this situation, even though probably due to a younger population, they haven't been faced with, uh, um, with dram dramatic uh, impacts. So yes, we do have a question from Mr. Back from Turkey. Osman, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Philip, uh, for the excellent report. Uh, uh, concerning uh, it's a big pandemic and uh, it's a big problem for the world and uh, COVID-19 issue which is very very important uh, for the region for the MENA region for the Middle East and North Africa because of uh, uh, health in infrastructure which is uh, it's a big uh, issue to uh, cope uh, and fight against COVID-19 because uh, we, we see many countries in the region has uh, has uh, difficulties in the health system. So, and also uh, economic issues are uh, very very important uh, for the region. Thank you very much for the report. You cover uh, those issues. We, uh, as a Turkish delegation, uh, uh, we put some amendments and we have uh, already sent uh, these amendments to Mr. Uh, Paul Cook uh, concerning uh, these issues. Uh, I hope you will uh, look through on these uh, issues. Uh, for uh, for our side, uh, uh, as a Turkey experiencing big uh, uh, refugee population in in our country, 
we do have uh, uh, treat uh, uh, those refugees uh, as a, our as 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 good as our citizens, and they are uh, they have uh, opportunity and rights to uh, take part and get uh, treatment from a health system. Uh, and also, uh, Turkey has uh, built a uh, uh, couple of um, five, six uh, new hospitals. We completed them. And uh, so we are ready to help all those countries concerning COVID, fighting against COVID-19. So as a Turkey, we sent our neighbors uh, uh, some uh, health supplements, masks, etc. So we are going, uh, we are doing this uh, with our, all the, uh, our uh, neighbors in the region. Turkey is ready to uh, cope and fight against, fight against uh, COVID-19 and has a strong health infrastructure, uh, which was uh, uh, built uh, last uh, 15 years. So last uh, one year, uh, also we completed uh, more uh, city hospitals, which is very uh, uh, important for the uh, health uh, infrastructure. So my concern uh, about is the this uh, after COVID-19 issue, economic crisis and other issues will uh, force and uh, some more refugees to move uh, for uh, NATO allies and also European Union should uh, <clears throat> make some plans uh, on this issue because otherwise uh, people uh, will have more economic difficulties uh, as you mentioned uh, some points uh, uh, concerning tourism which is very very important in this region in many region some of the countries are looking and getting um, uh, more income from uh, tourism but we, we will not see this this in 2000, uh, 2020 so this is another issue, and you mentioned about that uh, in the report. And uh, as a Turkey, we are uh, always happy to cooperate with our allies, with our uh, neighbors, uh, to help and fight against uh, COVID-19 and for the circumstances which come through because of economic difficulties. So we do ready. We do have. Uh, we are always ready uh, to cooperate with this issue. And I would like to thank again to Philip Folio for uh, this excellent report. And also I would like to thank uh, my uh, colleague, my uh, uh, Mr. Ahmed Berachankwar, concerning the Sahel region, which, which is, he has also touched some of the issues. And uh, we do uh, put uh, our uh, points on this report also. And it was, uh, this is uh, as far as uh, is, is, uh, uh, situation COVID-19, uh, which is uh, this kind of meetings are very uh, uh, helpful, very uh, productive. Uh, uh, today we had productive uh, uh, meetings. Uh, I, I thank you to our colleagues for their support. And we have to be. Uh, we, uh, I'm putting my point again. We should have, uh, as a European, I mean, in, as a NATO and as a European Union, uh, some plan to to. Uh, uh, we, we could face uh, some more uh, refugee movement from North Africa to Europe. Uh, so that's why we have to help uh, those uh, governments, those countries, as much as we can. So we have to work on this uh, issue together. I hope this report will put some uh, uh, guidelines and points uh, concerning this issue. So <clears throat> thank you very much again for for your uh, report, X, uh, and we do share our uh, points uh, to... Merci. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Philippe. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, dear Osman. Um, I think that um, at this stage, there are no requests for the floor, so I think that... Um, yes, I think that... Uh, uh, all this was uh, was duly noted, and it will allow us to complete uh, this report. So, I haven't uh, received any other uh, business. Um, 
So as I said at the beginning of the meeting, we'll work with the uh, Italian delegation to set up a seminar which will take place in Rome and Naples this autumn. We uh, are doing our best to adapt to the circumstances and confirm dates and places as soon as possible so that you can organize your participation. And it will be uh, with real pleasure that we will uh, see each other again because uh, it's a video is nice, but it's it's it's, it's so much better to when we can meet uh, in person. So this uh, concludes uh, the meeting of the. Mediterranean and Middle East uh, special group. Uh, I would like to thank all the members uh, for their um, constructive participation in our uh, in our work today. I would like to thank our rapporteur for his excellent report and um, it will be even better after uh, the uh, comments that you made and the uh, inputs that uh, that you will send to us also and on behalf of all the participants I would like to express our, our thanks to our interpreters who uh, are working in the conditions circumstances that are not always easy and who have done a magnificent job in allowing us to communicate so effectively and a big thank you also to Paul and Anne-Laure and Nathan and all their colleagues uh, from the Secretariat of the NPA who uh, were uh, who worked behind the scenes uh, to make sure that this meeting go as smoothly as possible. Thank you to our Secretary General, Roxandra, who uh, contributed and took part in this uh, meeting, so thank you. And um, I wanted to uh, wish you uh, a good end of afternoon, uh, good afternoon to, to all of you. And uh, be careful and um, stay healthy because the, uh, the pandemic is not quite over and so if we, uh, if you want to uh, meet again in person uh, in the autumn, um, then you have to be careful and stay healthy, you and your family. So thank you and see you soon.